not where you see it every day. Um, I'm on a rock shelf uh, above Tass Wells, north of Cardiff. Uh, and there's a reason I'm up here. It's, uh, let's go back to 1898. Now, as I've said previously in previous videos, there's coal up there, there's docks down there. We want to get it from there to there and we want to do as much as we can because we can make a lot of money. And the Tuff Valley Railway and the Rumley Railway um, doing very well. But there was a third one that was doing very, very well as well, which was the Barry Railway. And they had built from Barry Docks and developed Barry Docks and built up to the Rhonda Valleys and was shifting a lot of coal. But this wasn't enough for them. They wanted to go further. And what they wanted was access to the Rumney Valley, which is kind of like of that direction. To do that, they've got to do some pretty spectacular stuff. So they set about building the seven mile branch, which they called the Clambradock branch. It came off um, about some Fagans part of the world, which is uh, east of Cardiff. And if you go there today, there's a very, very nice heritage museum, which I would highly recommend. They had to go through the side of a cliff, the side of a hill, and then they had to bridge the gorge at Taft's Wells, which is why I'm up here to see what's left. Because to do that, they had to do some pretty spectacular engineering feats. So first of all, they had to build a, a tunnel. And this is Garth Tunnel. It's 490 yards in length. And as you get closer, you can see they're pretty strict about not letting anybody in. And by the looks of the uh, wood on the left, it looks as though someone's used that to try and climb up to get in. But there's a good reason for that, and that is this lovely tunnel has been cut in two by quarrying works, which is up over the top of there. And in actual fact, you can see the tunnel. If you look on Google Earth, you can actually see where the tunnel has been cut in two. Having come through the tunnel, the railway then continued along this rock ledge. And we're a couple of hundred feet up in the air, um, up above Cass Wells. So walking up from the tunnel, um, there is this brick building here. There's a lot of discussion about what this is. Um, looking at photographs of the viaduct at the time, um, there was uh, a workman's hut, but there's also a signal box. And there's some discussion about whether this is this, or this is that, and what have you. However, when you look at the detail uh, of the photos that, that are shown, the, the distance from here to the tunnel and from here up to the viaduct, got to mean this is just this is the platelet's hut or the workman's hut or whatever. But certainly, um, it's not in the best of condition. Now there's a bit of an issue. This railway is coming along this particular part of the world, and down there is Taft's Wells. It's a narrow gorge, and it contains already the Taft Valley Railway, the Cardiff Railway the Glamorganshire Canal and a road. There's absolutely no way we're going to get another railway down there. Plus we're quite high up. So if we can't go under it or through it, we go over it. And they built this. This is Walnut Tree Viaduct. It's 120 feet high in its highest place. Seven spans created a structure of 1,548 feet. All I know is it's a long way down. The line itself soldiered on to about 1965 when the tunnel closed and the last train went over Walnut Tree Viaduct in 1967. It was dismantled in 1969 to build our old friend the A470. You can hear the road noise all along. What's left is one pier 
which is clearly seen from the road. Another one a little bit hidden in the undergrowth and the actual viaduct entrance because the line would have come along here from the tunnel and then veered off right over the viaduct. So let's have a look and see what's left. So heading down from the tunnel um, and you can see this is the entrance to the viaduct. So the trains would have veered off literally here to the left onto the viaduct. Um, a lot of photos I've seen it's not so overgrown and I do wonder how long it'll be before these trees start affecting the masonry. Let's have a look. I'm not the first person to come up here and I certainly won't be the last. It is quite well known amongst railway historians and archaeologists. I think you'll find there's also a lot, a lot of young lads and lasses hang around up here as well. So you would come straight along here towards this fence. There's a driver I don't know what it must have been like to think I'm about, about to plunge into nothingness. Straight ahead of us you can see the other pier that was left remaining and through the trees you can see one just above that uh, the blue roof of that building there. The other piers were taken down, demolished brick by brick and uh, even though they started demolishing the top of it in 1969 it wasn't until 1974 they actually got the last down and you can see the A470 in the background. On the other side there's nothing left, there's no bridge abutments, there's no piers, there's absolutely nothing. There's literally a line of bricks to show where the edge was, uh, a very swampy cutting and that's about it. But the line continued up that side around the edge of that uh, that hill over there until it continued up to Kefili. Interesting enough the line veered onto the viaduct but there was a short spur that actually kept going and served uh, the quarry which is uh, part up on the other side of the hill and uh, it was that that kept the line open and when they shut the tunnel in 65 they kept the trains going over the viaduct and then reversing in here in order to get the stone out and that's what kept everything going but uh, not enough traffic and too much maintenance and upkeep to uh, to justify keeping going. Had I been a director of the Barry Rowie Company, it would have been something to really celebrate. Not only you'd built a major tunnel, you'd built a viaduct, come around the side of a hill, and around about where I'm standing here would have joined to the Romney Railway. That is what they set out to do, that is what they achieved. However, hold those trebles all round and those cigars for the directors, because there were some problems to come. I'll tell you more about those in the next video.